Hello, and welcome to episode 92 of Uncovering the Corners of the World podcast. I'm your host, Karina Kasmala. Using research and my personal experiences where I actually set foot in some of these places, I'll be describing some of the unknown attractions in both the U.S. and around the world, as well as share some of the hidden landmarks of some well-known attractions. On the last episode, we traveled through Oklahoma to see the Route 66 Historical Village, National Route 66 Museum and Old Town Village, and a one-room jail. This week, we enter Texas on our Route 66 journey. Even though Texas may be the second largest state in the United States, Route 66 doesn't pass through the entire state, only a small part of it. The historic Mother Road underwent rerouting in Amarillo due to the expansion of the airport. 178 miles of Route 66 passed through Texas, with Amarillo being one of the main towns on this road. However, today, only 150 miles of Route 66 are drivable in Texas. Our first attraction in Texas takes us to a structure that is similar to its Disney counterpart. If you are following along this Route 66 journey, you might remember that we visited some attractions in Kansas that were slightly altered but inspired the landmarks in the Disney and Pixar movie Cars. Located at 111 U.S. Route 66 in Shamrock, Texas is the Conoco Tower Station, which was the inspiration for Ramon's body art shop in the movie Cars. Ramon is a 1959 Chevy Impala and one of the characters that lived in Radiator Springs along Route 66. The tower station in New Drop Inn Cafe was built in 1936 by J.M. Tyndall and R.C. Lewis, and it incorporated elements from the Art Deco movement with light brick and green grazed tiles. The building was intended to be three separate structures. One of the structures is the Tower Conoco Station, which features four-sided columns, and it is topped with a metal tulip. The other structure was the U-Drop Inn Cafe. This name was the winning entry of the naming contest. The last structure was supposed to be a retail store, but instead it served as an additional seating area for those who came to the cafe. After the 1970s, the building was refurbished with light pink concrete highlighted with green paint, but it still looks similar to what it looked like before, and it is easily seen from the road with the word Conoco written on the tower. The building in the movie Cars incorporates the same Art Deco design style and colors. The only difference is Ramon's House of Body Art is written on the building and colorful hoods can be seen in the windows. Today, the tower station and new drop in cafe is owned by the city of Shamrock and operates as a visitor center, chamber of commerce, and community center. Gusty winds constantly blow as vehicles try to navigate the open fields in the Texas Panhandle. To break the endless views of dirt and road is the Cadillac Ranch, located at 13651 I-40 Frontage Road in Amarillo, Texas. On June 21, 1974, 10 now almost decomposed Cadillacs from 1949 to 1963 were buried nose down at a 60 degree angle. The Cadillac Ranch was originally placed in a wheat field along Route 66, but in 1997 it was moved to be just outside the town of Interstate 40. The art group called the San Francisco Ant Farm created the art installation. Formed by architect Doug Mickles, the San Francisco Ant Farm worked on underground design projects. One of the members of the group supposedly had the idea of burying a field of cars to create the illusion as if they were plants growing. They reached out to multiple millionaires who would be interested in taking up their idea and met Amarillo local Stanley March III who was interested in the idea but was said that he only did things in Amarillo. The art group decided on Cadillacs because they had the idea to create a monument that showcased the rise and fall of the Cadillac tailfin. The cars were bought from junkyards and originally were sky blue, turquoise, banana yellow, and gold. However, throughout the years, the Cadillacs were painted in various colors to support or honor holidays, such as one 
Cinco de Mayo holiday where the cars were painted red, green, and white, and pink for child cancer awareness. Today, the Cadillacs no longer, for the most part, have their original parts. Thieves stole radios, chrome, speakers, and other equipment. The wheels were welded to the axis to prevent more thefts. Graffiti covers the entire bodies of the Cadillacs. The sculpture site is open 24-7, 365 days a year. This sculpture was also adapted in the movie Cars as a large north-to-south mountain range that features many fin-backed sharp peaks. It was called the Cadillac Range and can be seen behind Radiator Springs. There are plenty of museums along Route 66 in multiple states that chronicles the history of the Mother Road, but there is only one museum that takes visitors on a journey through the historical evolution of barbed wire. Located at 100 Kingsley Street in McLean, Texas, is the Devil's Rope and Route 66 Museum. Two large balls made out of barbed wire are mounted on limestone poles outside the museum. Once you step inside the museum, there are several exhibits. There is a room dedicated to the history of the Dust Bowl with photographs from that time period. Route 66 history, but the barbed wire room is the largest and most detailed room of them all. Barbed wire traces its origins to the 1870s, but it wasn't invented by one person. Joseph F. Glidden of DeKalb, Illinois, is however credited as the person who applied for a specific patent in 1873. His patent for the barbed wire was for the winner, which was two metal rods twisted with a barbed wire that tied them together. In 1874, Joseph Glidden's barbed wire was introduced and eventually made its way to Texas. Barbed wire plays a major role and was revolutionary for landowners or ranchers, as before they had to dig ditches or plant hedges to mark property lines and ensure that cattle didn't wander off their land. However, there were people who were against barbed wire, going as far as calling it the devil's rope. Religious groups called barbed wire the devil's rope after they saw that it caused injuries to cattle, horses, and people when it was first introduced. The museum showcases the evolution of barbed wire, from the early days when it was considered vicious because of its sharpness, to how it became more looser, and to how manufacturing businesses made barbed wire faster and cheaper. Over time, there was more than 2,000 types of barbed wire invented that varied in size and shape. Some of them can be found in the museum. I think the most impressive artifacts in the museum are the different sculptures made of barbed wire, like a scorpion, a cowboy hat, a cowboy taming a bull, and even a bra. There is also information on how barbed wire was used for telephone lines in the 1890s. Besides barbed wire, you'll also find tools used by ranchers, such as wire stretchers, wrenches, saws, and more. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. If you want to read more about the Conoco Tower Station and U Drop In Cafe, check out the National Park Service website on the Tower Station and U Drop In Cafe. If you're interested in learning more about the history of the Cadillac Ranch, check out the website visit amarillo.com slash listing slash Cadillac Ranch and the article Weird West Texas. What's the story behind the Cadillac Ranch? Written by Brandy D. Addison. If you're planning a trip to the Devil's Rope and Route 66 Museum, be sure to read the article, A Texas Panhandle Museum Explores the Wire That Tamed the American West, written by Joe Nick Batoski, and the article, Texas Primer, Barbed Wire, written by Ann Dingus. Have a great week.